Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I'm your host, Deborah Chantry-Taylor, and I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs lead their ideal lives by creating better businesses. I'm a certified EOS implementer, an FBA-accredited family business advisor, and a business owner myself with several business interests. And I work with established business owners and their leadership teams to help them live their ideal entrepreneurial life using EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. My guests come on the show to share with you their experiences in their business, the highs and the lows, and what they have learned from that experience. And they're often also experts in their own field. One of the things that um, the program teaches is that stress is a, a real and even a good part of life. But one of the things that's really shifted, I think, in the modern workforce is that rather than having a stressful moment, which can actually kind of promote pace of work and you can get some things done and having the time to come down from that, then it goes stressful moment after stressful moment after stressful moment. And even people's um, responses to things that aren't that stressful can feel stressful if you're operating at this kind of level. So today I have got a a beautiful guest who has gone from being overwhelmed in one business um, to actually now running two businesses without the overwhelm. She's going to share you how she got to that. She runs a people place with a whole team of HR professionals, as well as a new business that they're just launching called Be Minded. And she's bringing Be Minded from Sweden to New Zealand. So today she's going to share with you how she uh, has got on on that journey and what she has learned through that process. Please um, welcome Nat Milne, the co-founder and managing partner of Be Minded. Nat, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. So we've been having a bit of a chat outside before you came in. You've got a very interesting story because you've been quite deliberate in the way that you've built your businesses, but you did get to a point where you were feeling very overwhelmed by everything. Tell us a little bit about what happened. Well, thank you for having me again. Um, I started the People Place on a whim. I was on my own. I had decided to go out on my own and um, didn't really have a huge amount of goals for the business. Um, I signed my first client on a Friday. So that was an exciting thing. Had decided to, you know, launch my own business and um, signed a 14 month contract with a business where I was going to be in and out of that organization, helping them implement their first ever performance review framework. So I, that was a Friday, and on the Monday, I found out I was pregnant with my first child. So what that meant for me is that I had um, signed a contract that I could no longer deliver, and my first meeting with, with my, with my first, sorry, my first project meeting with this client, I had to sit down and say, thank you so much for, you know, giving, t- taking the punt on me and signing up to this contract, and I'm going to be having a baby in eight months' time, and I'm not going to be able to deliver it. And this client looked at me and he said, Nat, what a delightful distraction. There's more to life than business. Carry on. We'll figure it out. So that, for me, was the start of owning the people place. I had this client who I felt like I'd mucked around. You can imagine that meeting where I had to kind of go, thanks so much. And, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, who had this incredibly gracious response towards me starting a family. Um, and I think why that's significant is from the very first day I owned the People Place, or the first day we were kind of in operation, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to be everything to this business. Um, it meant that I knew that if we were going to make anything of this, I either needed to gather the right skill around me, or essentially I was going to need to shut down in eight months and that'll be that. So um, I did. I did hire in my first year. I actually brought on um, an HR business partner who was a lot more senior than I had ever been. Um, Also came with salary expectations that were in line with her level of experience. Um, But I think why, why it's a powerful part of my story is that I essentially was growing a family while I've also been growing a business. And those two things have had to coexist in a re- in a way that kind of works for family, works for the business. Um, yeah, so we grew reasonably steadily in our first few years. We grew purely through word of mouth, which was a really um, encouraging way to grow. You know, we didn't have any marketing budget or any marketing spend. And really, it was our clients hearing about the services that we were offering um, that helped us grow. And then COVID hit. So I think by the time COVID hit, we would have had maybe... I'm going to say five or six staff. So yeah, we had we had grown reasonably significantly for me working part time, but it certainly wasn't you know a conglomerate. Um, and through COVID, actually, I might just back up a little bit. One of the other things is because of what I was doing in life, which was having babies, 
um, and I always worked part time. I, I I think kind of naturally gathered other people who were working part time, and not all of them were working part time because they were parents, but they had d- d- different interests in life. So I think this really kind of fundamental value in the people place that we were all people were highly skilled in what we did, but actually had other things going on in our lives that we wanted to be able to be um, present at or contribute to or whatever it may be. So um, for several of us, it was parenting. Others had uh, had and have music interests. So I had people who work part-time because they play music part-time. Um, but I think this whole idea that I, for business to work, it has to work for life as well as business has been a really fundamental part of our story. So fast forward a little bit, the People Place grew to, um, we were 13 staff this time last year, and I was very, 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 very stressed. And I think um, if you had asked me, I never would have told you that. I never would have said I'm really stressed. But I think how that was outworking was um, I was struggling to make decisions. So I was really indecisive in the business, and I was kind of touching the same piece of work several times before progressing it. And that had an impact on the business because, um, well, ideally you have a leader at the, at the <laughs> who is able to make decisions and push things forward and, um, you know, delegate well. And I think, I think I, fe- I felt a little bit like the wheels had fallen off in, in how I was managing. Um, and we, you know, we had got through COVID, I don't want to say unscathed. I certainly went our best ever years, but you know, we were okay during COVID. Um, but I was just stressed, not sleeping well. Um, Terrier than perhaps I'd like to admit, you know, all these indicators that actually just I wasn't well. And um, I, so over, it was the kind of summer before the one we just had met through a friend, sorry, my husband's cousin's friend was um, over from Sweden and we went for a lovely long walk together. So we kind of met up at the family batch and went for this lovely long walk together around Tafranui um, Reserve. And so we're talking about what we do in life. And I was telling her about, you know, my business and 13 staff and some of the challenges we were having and some of the things I was navigating. And she said to me, oh, I run a stress-free productivity consultancy out of Sweden. Um, I think we should talk about doing this together. You know, given where you're at and what I do, I think we should talk about doing this together. And I looked at her and I said, Anna, I have a business that's struggling, two small children, and sometimes I don't even make it to the shower. You know, I just said, there's no world that I have capacity for anything else. And probably deep, deep down, I thought, you know, she's really calm and chill, but I went stress-free productivity. Yeah, right. I mean, pick one or the other. Um, Anyway, she kind of, with her and I kept talking for several months. She went back to Sweden and we kept talking for several months. And um, I'm going to say around April last year, she said, Nat, why don't I take you and your husband through the program? And, you know, that will help help you determine whether or not this is something that you want to consider doing in New Zealand. And so over a series of weeks, she took us through this program and um, at the end of it, within two months, I had completely changed the people place around going from a business that actually had an eight month period of operating at a loss. So I completely turned that around, made structural decisions that actually supported our growth and felt completely in control of my working life versus kind of spinning out and not sleeping that well and feeling like I was holding 65,000 things in my head. Um, so at the end of that, I said to her, oh my goodness, Anna, we have to do this here. You know, I will not be the only business owner struggling with, um, my kind of my own productivity, but also the productivity of my team. So that's kind of one piece of it. And also the stress levels that we carry when we are not highly productive. Um, so it was a very real change in my life having done it. But I think on a really practical level, I had been doing this role as managing director of the people place and. I'm going to say about 25 hours a week. Now that that was kind of those hours at the office working. Also, there was probably another 15, 20, possibly plus of headspace that it was taking. Anyway, again, at the end of having done this Be Minded program with Anna, um, I managed to get that role down to 15 hours a week with my head clear when I wasn't at work. So much so that I then said to her, yes, you know, I went from going, no way, I don't even make it to the shower some days to absolutely, I've got time to do this. Let's do this. So that was, um, I mean, you can imagine wildly powerful for both how I work and how I live. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit of my, yeah, that's that's a little bit of my story. Yeah. I'm really keen to hear because you said that your husband also did the course. Yes. So your husband, his name is? Josh. Josh. So what is Josh's work? What does he do? Yeah, so he is a design and innovation manager. So he works for himself in the construction industry. So mm. design and innovation and construction. 
And yes, he and I did it together. And I think it's a, it's a good thing for you to touch on because we had quite different experiences, but both really positive. So um, for me, I would describe the course as completely life-changing. It absolutely you know, ter- helped me turn my business around made my head a whole lot clearer when I was at home. I enjoyed my time with my children more. I slept better. You know, I think it really had this quite profound, life-changing experience. I also recognized I was right for the picking. You know, I think I was probably, um, if you look at the perfect candidate, you know, the perfect candidate for doing the program. Josh was probably starting from a better point. You know, he um, he wouldn't describe himself as particularly stressed. Certainly wasn't teary on most days. You know, he, um, yeah, so started better. But what he found is he went into his workplace much clearer on what he needed to do on any given day. With the clarity comes deep focus. So able to get his work done um, more quickly. So yeah, so he was, sorry, let me say that again. He is much clearer on what he needs to do on any given day, therefore able to get himself into deep focus and therefore being able to get the results he needed to at pace with lower stress. But I, again, I think, um, I don't think it had the same, I want to say emotional impact on him, but my take on that is going, if, if, you know, if he's baseline and I'm completely life-changing, any result between here and here is going to be awesome. And the, um, Josh works for himself, but one of his biggest clients, or his biggest client booked Be Minded to work with them, having seen the results that, um, the, the kind of the change in the way Josh has worked. So I think they were different experiences. I think that is, um, relevant because there will be a whole range of people well, there are already a whole range of people booked to go through this um that well yeah I think kind of anywhere in that spectrum of um more focus getting your work done more quickly and clear on what you need to do on any given day to it changed my life and now I sleep eat live <laughs> and now run two businesses instead of just one in, in the same amount of hours and mm-hmm. enjoy my life more you know so it's kind of yeah excellent and so I just want to go back a little bit too, because you said that the 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 symptoms, if you like, of being a little bit overwhelmed, you weren't working necessarily really, really long hours, but you weren't able to be making the right decisions. You felt somehow overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, tell me a bit more about, you know, how do you recognize those symptoms? Because I think sometimes we can all be busy um, and then we kind of go, oh, but it's normal to work 40, 50, 60 hours, whatever you want in a, in a business. And that's not normal because I do believe that your capacity to make good decisions actually goes down when you're tired, when you're not sleeping well, when you actually, I think there must be a law of diminishing return. Once you work over a certain number of hours, you're not actually performing at your best. So what were the real symptoms? Yeah. I've learned a little bit about that and doing and now learning the Be Minded program. And it is there's so much around what's happening in your prefrontal cortex when you are stressed. So literally stress has an impact on the brain and mm. it shuts down your ability for creative problem solving. Um, empathy you know there's a whole lot of things that actually the small but important part of your brain uh, holds that actually stress just completely ruins basically um yes i think going back to kind of what were the symptoms you're absolutely right for me it wasn't a a number of hours worked and it never has been so i've been really clear on my priorities which are dual you know i have a business that i really care about and i have a family that i want to be present in but i think what what crept in was all of the work um, which is the kind of trying to problem solve while I'm with my children. Um, so I think of an example, I have a six-year-old and I would often find myself um, at home, not at work. I'm picturing one particular scenario where I was getting a glass of water from the fridge and you know, there's nothing for her to suggest that I'm busy. She came to try and say something to me and I honestly wanted to say to her, shush, you know, I was standing there pouring myself a glass of water but trying to solve a problem that ideally I'm solving in a work context and I want to tell my six-year-old daughter to shush. You know, that's, that's um that is a key indicator that I'm working when I'm not at work. So I think um yeah to, to to your point, it's for me it wasn't about hours spent at the office, but it was about not being able to shut down or not being able to actually get the things done I needed to do in my short hours because I wasn't particularly planned about it. I wasn't clear on what my priorities were and um in terms of work stuff, not on the kind of family work piece, but on actually what do I need to do to push my business forward. So one of the things I really learned through the program was was getting explicitly clear on what's on my agenda and making sure that I um, both look forward and look back on any given week going given that I know I need to do this this and this in the next seven 14 days have I scheduled enough time to do it does that include the problem solving time to get to actually execute the work so being much clearer on um, what work I have to do where I'm actually trying to go and then being able to execute it has really helped. Um, and I think I think the key thing it's helped is for me to feel completely in control 
rather than responsive to the things that are coming at me. Um, I now feel like I'm on the front front foot and I determine what I work on on any given, sorry, on any given day based on what I have determined are the priorities for my week, day, month, whatever it may be. So it actually has, um, yet changed the way that I work. Wow. It is amazing, isn't it? Because, um, I think that we just get onto almost like a hamster wheel where the, the way that we do things, just the way that we do things, and we can't even see what is not really working. And I think for me, it kind of represented itself when I was um, in my business doing, um, it was the not being able to sleep at, because I, I have a capacity to do a huge amount of work. I think probably more than most people I know, and I, I blame my ADHD for that. But it was the waking up at sort of 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning and suddenly thinking through things and and just not being able to clear my mind and therefore you wouldn't get back to sleep. You didn't have a good night's sleep. Then it becomes a self-perpetuating kind of, you know, you're tired and then you can't do things. So it, it obviously, um, it represents itself in different ways, but it is that, yeah. Uh, Can I tell you about, a? Um, this is a small part of the program, but I think there's yeah. a very specific way that we address that particular issue, sure. um, which is that we get participants to do an hour of a weekly review. And within that weekly review, um, the first two minutes are spent completely in silence. So you literally sit at your desk, Total silence, laptop down, you know, taking a minute. And then you set a timer again for seven minutes. And we call it this clear on your head. And in that, you are literally just writing tasks of all the things that pop in to your mind that you haven't found a way to get done yet. Yep. And, and what I found is the first time I did that, the end of seven minutes happened. I felt like I was, you know, I like couldn't even, I was nowhere near finished. Whereas now I've been doing this for a year and I'm pretty committed to what I do it almost every week. But what happens is in, I now get through my things in maybe two or three minutes. But the program suggests that um, you sit there for the seven minutes no matter what. Because what emerges, and this is what I found, what emerges when you think you've got everything out of your head in minutes four, five, six are the things that wake you up in the morning. Because they're a little bit deeper. And when you, you know, when you're just powering through the, you know, call this person, do this, work on this project, whatever it may be, you're not gonna think of, oh, I actually need to implement a strategy for solving that problem. It's not in that quick part of your mind. And so by giving yourself a little bit more space. And what we see is those things that used to wake me up at 2 a.m. or whatever it may be. I mean, my issue was I'd fall asleep quickly because I'd be so exhausted, but it might be 10, 15 that I'm boom, you know, I'm back, I'm just back on and thinking. Um, and that part of the program, again, a small piece, but has actually really helped clear the deeper parts of my thinking that used to wake me up in the middle of the night. So I feel you. <laughs> So I'm really like I, I got past it too. And we we um we recommend something similar with an EOS, and it's called a clarity break. And, and the way that we describe it is that if you imagine you have a glass of water with some sand in the bottom, if you're always on the go, then the the water is always cloudy. It's only when you actually completely stop that the sand gets a chance to settle, and suddenly you have the clarity. But yeah, it takes discipline, and it takes and and I think that it's like with everything in life. I mean, I have a personal trainer for the gym because I know that I know what I should do. I know how I should eat. I know what exercise I need to do, but without somebody actually kind of giving me some frameworks for that and holding me accountable, it doesn't happen. So I'm guessing that's what the be-minded thing is, right? It's like we all know what we do need to do, but do we actually do it? Yeah. yeah. And it, it, it is a commitment, mm. right? It's not like you get taught a methodology for working and then can carry on the way that you were and you're going to see any change. You're absolutely right. It's a commitment yeah. and um, good on you. <laughs> There's no magic silver bullet in anything in life. No, absolutely. So it's a little bit like, what was the guy? Was it Remington? Who said he liked the, he liked the razor so much he bought the business. I mean, that's what's really happened with you, isn't it? You've kind of, you went, you did this. Yep. And then fell in love with it. So, um, so tell me a little bit about some of the, the outcomes in terms of what you've seen with yourself and with Josh in terms of what you've seen change since doing the work. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so the kind of the big obvious one is the dramatic reduce in hours for me. So a role that had I been working in a different way could have been taking me 15 hours a week was taking me 25 and 25 and I was stressed so to be able to take a job that um and literally just create time in my <laughs> week has been really really powerful so that's a very practical I've just been able to reduce it so what that's looked like for me is being able to start a new business now for we deliver this training in workplaces so if you um if a workplace books us and we're able to you know reduce someone's working hours by 10 hours a week they're not going to then be off 10 hours a week looking to start another business for them it's going to be going great if i can get this amount done in this amount of time what else can am i able to do what are the outcomes for the business am i able to produce um new zealand is a big productivity issue and so we are so excited about working with businesses to either kind of get rid of what i call the faff around roles you know things that people are spending time on that are not getting them towards the results that the business is actually looking for from them. And if we can do that while reducing stress. 
four for one. Um, so yes, for me, it was very a very real time capturing, but I recognized because I work for myself, that looks like one thing. People in businesses, it's going to look like a different thing. Um, and lower stress, I mean, we all want lower stress, right? You know, that's just something that I feel like everyone is looking for, but it doesn't just happen. And I think one of the things that um, the program teaches is that stress is a, a real and even a good part of life. But one of the things that's really shifted, I think, in the modern workforce is that rather than having a stressful moment, which can actually kind of promote pace of work and you can get some things done and having the time to come down from that then, it goes stressful moment after stressful moment after stressful moment. And even people's um, responses to things that aren't that stressful can feel stressful if you're operating at this kind of level. So an example might be um, if you've had what I would say, a genuinely stressful day. You know, something's happened that has really mean, that meant that you've needed to be on at a pace of 120 miles an hour, whatever it may be. If you get an email that is a tiny little problem, tiny little problem, it's going to feel like you suddenly have this whole new fire to fight. If you got that email perhaps the next morning after a good sleep, or if you had had the chance to actually just come down from this day's stress, you're going to go, oh, that's not too big of a deal. I just need to do A, B, C, D, and E or A and B to solve that. And so you can imagine, um, kind of I want to say in the modern workforce, when people are getting hundreds of emails a day, it's really hard for the tired mind to triage that kind of that volume of email and know which one to treat like a fire that needs to be dealt with immediately versus actually, I'm going to be better to deal with that in the morning. Or actually, that one doesn't need any attention for a week because I'm actually busy focused on the things that are producing the results I need to for a business. And you talked about when we were outside of that, no, when we, before we came into the, the podcast room, you actually kind of said that um, you talked about your email inbox and, and, you know, how stressful it was and how that had changed your whole approach. Because I mean, I, I was laughing with you and saying, you know, that my inbox is absolutely um, chock block full at the moment. And I, 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 I've, I've become reasonably self-aware that I know when I start to really type hard on the keyboard, that's the time I should go, stop. Let's put this aside for a while. Maybe, maybe type everything, get it all out so you feel like you're on top of it, but then put it away somewhere and review it before you send it. Because otherwise you can find yourself sending an email that is in a triggered state, which means the person who receives it will also get triggered. And before you know it, you're into this, which is awful. Yeah. But it's, but it's not always easy to pick that up. And so you've got some methodologies that can actually teach you how to, um, look at those messages and decide what is important. Yeah, yeah, we do. So I now operate with a zero email inbox. So what that looks like for me is um, I normally do it maybe two or three times a day I'm in my inbox, but mm -hmm. I actually now work out of my task list rather than my inbox. So when I get to work at the start of the day, the first thing I'm doing is not clearing my emails. And the reason for that is I've predetermined my priorities for the day and those are the things that I focus on. And I think I'm um, Anna, the Swedish founder, had this lovely example of how we don't stand at our letterboxes and wait for mail to respond to, yet that's often how we work. You know, we're in our emails and, you know, we might be working on the thing that's the most important if we're organized and a new email pops up and off we go to that one. Oh, is that one important? And, you know, next minute, you know, you've done 10 others before mm. being actually focused on the things that you have predetermined are your priorities. Um, so the first thing is I don't work out of my inbox anymore. It does mean I can be slower to respond, but most of the things that come into my inbox don't need an immediate response at all. And in fact, the quality of the response typically is better if I've waited. Um, so the first thing is like, yeah, don't operate out of it. And then as part of that weekly review, I was mentioning, um, actually I'll go back a little bit. So every day, rather than um, actioning every email as it comes in or even from bottom up, I am triaging and categorizing at what pace that email needs to be addressed. So our kind of general rule is if it takes less than two minutes, we do it on this, you know, on the spot when you're in your inbox, yeah. just happens. And if it needs any more thought than that, it gets put into one of the categories of, of, um, this, I can talk to you about this yep. a little bit later, but kind of high to low importance, basically. And then it gets responded to in its rightful place when you've got the right time to actually engage in the response. Um, so now I get to the end of the day and I don't have emails in my inbox. I'm, I'm just so much more in control of when I'm going to do certain things. And lots of people have said to me, gosh, it sounds like, that sounds like a lot of work just administ administratively. But I think the thing that I've found is that, yes, there are some extra steps, but it saves me so much time and so much headspace time, you know, that um, 
I'm so committed to it now. You know, it just it's just part of how you operate. It takes more time than it takes, basically significantly more time than what it takes to administer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the tools. Tell me a little bit more about what else um, you've learned from it. And also, I guess I wanted to just bring it up as well because I'm sure people are listening, kind of go, "Oh yeah, but you know, you're only working part time, yeah. so you're not the same as us. We work full time, Laura. But but your husband went through the same program, and so yeah." <laughs> So tell us a little bit about what he he took from that and how he has has he also implemented a zero inbox? Yep. Yeah, he does. He does possibly. Um, let me think about what Josh. I'm, I actually walked past him the other day because we both at times work from home, and I you know to the right of his screen he had this kind of pre o ones, which is your the things that you need to get done today, and his pre o twos were up as well. And I actually felt so thrilled for him. You know, I I knew anecdotally he was using it, but it was so cool to see it in action going, he's sitting there at his desk. He knows exactly what the things are he needs to work on. Um, he probably has, on any given day, slightly more complex tasks than what I'm doing. So in my managing director role, mine is lots about enabling, delegating, you know, actually enabling my people to get their work done, whereas he's probably in more of a um, operationally problem-solving kind of role. So I think that um, he feels like now he's got the time to think and plan because he's scheduled it versus trying to fit that in amongst 65 different people coming at him. You know, he now will switch off more. And when I say switch off, I mean switch off the outside world more um, to be able to focus. And, you know, he might do a two, two or three hour chunk of work versus a two or three hour chunk of work that actually only has an hour's output because he's had, you know, interruption, 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 interruption. Um, but I think both of the, the, both of our kind of examples are on a, on a very um, individual impact. It level, you know, we both yeah. have our kind of own individual experiences, whereas where the program is delivered is in businesses where you get the team together or a chunk of the business together and you're creating kind of common ground rules for mm -hmm. how you're going to work, how you're going to respect each other's deep focus time, your email communication culture, you know, what goes into an email, who gets CC'd into it, how clear it is to read. Your meeting culture, you know, how useful are your meetings or not? And are they a good use of time? So, you know, I think we've had these quite um, almost different experiences doing it in our context versus what the program delivers in workplaces, um, which looks a little bit different. And that, that's great, though, because I, I think it's, um, you know, it's really good to have a common set of rules, a common way of working, a common language you can actually talk to and have everybody understand. And I think the whole the email thing is fascinating, isn't it? Because, I mean, we, we often see people who CC everybody into an email. It's like, why? Yeah, and that's why we have hundreds of emails in our inbox. We don't need that kind of level of communication. Yeah, um, I've seen mindful. people who have um, put an automatic rule in the inbox to have all emails that they CC'd into go straight into another file and mm -hmm. they check that once a day, once a week, whatever's kind of the appropriate amount of time. Because if it's only a CC, it's essentially an FYI, right? Yeah. So you might take a moment to go, I might just glance through my FYIs rather than letting all of those have the same level of priority in your day headspace mm -hmm. than the people who actually need to get in contact with you directly for something. So, yeah. you know, there's, you know, there's different ways of managing this. Yeah. Perfect. So in terms of the program itself, I mean, what sort of commitment is that from a, a, a leadership team perspective? So there's um, two main pieces to it, which is one is a full day workshop that we do together and then four to six weeks later, a half day okay. workshop. The only commitment prior to that is we do a preparatory study with you. So there's a kind of an anonymous survey that goes out and that basically just gives us an indication of what we're coming into. So all of the participants would do that. Um, and then the person who's booked the workshop, so so far that's typically kind of managing director, CEO, so, you know, that, that level is um, spends an hour with us, giving us a heads up on who's going to be in the room, what they're expecting, whether or not they're booked us because they're mostly worried about productivity in their team or they're mostly worried about stress. You know, where do we need to kind of put the emphasis in the workshop? And then the business itself provides a year of support following the program. So the idea is that... Um, you leave day one with the methodology, yeah. ready to implement. You brought your lap look, laptop into the workshop and we worked in your tech stack. We worked with you on you know, your real life work. Um, and then the four to six weeks later, when we get together again, it's looking at, um, we do re-go over some of the material because every, everybody forgets something. So we re-go over some of it and a kind of what's working, what's not, what have you found in your team since implementing it? What are you not getting to? Um, and then we're available for support for the year that follows that. Yeah. We call it space learning in the US. I mean, I think it's really important that you actually have to take something away. You need to use it and then you need to come back and then go, right, and I call it suck and see. Like you kind of go out there and see what works, what doesn't work, what needs to be adjusted, which is absolutely fantastic. It sounds like it's very complementary to the kind of work that I do. I think 
the biggest challenge is so we, we work on the business and we go, hey, you know, what are our rocks? What are our focus for the quarter? But then what happens generally is people come back in and they've been too busy and they haven't made the time. And so we try and help them with that, but it's hard because, um, you, you know, we're always caught up in sort of fighting fires and we need to get out of that fighting fire mentality. Especially because I genuinely believe that some of the things that we're treating as fires aren't, you yeah. know? So I think that when people say they're too busy, um, and I mean, I think possibly what you've said to me is you're always working with leadership teams, I think, yes. whereas this program probably gets delivered. Yes, it ideally starts with a leadership team, but then trickles down the business. So um, what we see is this leadership layer often going, my people are saying they're too busy, but I'm going too busy doing what? And so this helps to solve some of that, you know, going actually, well, now um, you get to be involved in helping set the priorities, which perhaps your organization does yes and then this methodology helps them actually get it done you know so i think yeah you're right i think it's more complimentary than i perhaps realize yeah no it's fantastic okay cool hey um we could probably talk all day but i'd I love to always give some really practical pragmatic tips for the listeners right because we want them to to, to to listen and go wow that's inspiring but what can i actually do so what are your kind of three top tips that we could share with the listeners cool so i um the first one I think is to really know as a business owner what your priorities are in business and in life. So I was very clear that my priorities were twofold. One was to run a business that was profitable and working for my life and family. And two was to be present in my family. And so all of the decisions that I've made around business have had to support a, a dual priority. And um, if your priority is business only, go for it. But know that it's going to have an impact on other areas of your life. So I think it's just really important when you own a business to make sure you're clear on what your life priorities are as well as your work ones. And I think uh, I, I always use the example of the um, the cat from Alice in Wonderland, right? Like if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. So that clarity in your entire life and how your business supports, I think is really important. And I know often as business owners, we go into a business and the business kind of grows So this be this monster that we don't feel like we have any control over, but we actually have to continually review that and go, is that supporting what I want to do? Do I have time to pursue other passions? Um, business is not everything. Life is too short. There's other things we want to be doing. I completely agree. Yeah. Completely agree. <laughs> the second is have a methodology for how you support your priorities. So obviously one one is actually manage, like this Be Minded program, I think, is a methodology for supporting your priorities. And um, for me, that's looked like having really clear categories of importance of things in my life and making sure in business and in, and in life um, and making sure that I work to those. So whatever the methodology is that you find, have one. And I guess it's exactly what you've just said with the Cheshire cat, right? Going any road. But, but, so what, what is the line? Say it again. It's like if you don't know where you're going, any road, any road will get you there. Whereas I would say, uh, know where you're going and then carve the path that actually gets you there. Mm -hmm. um, and the third is... Don't think that you can be everything to your business. You know, outsource where you need to gather the right people around you. And um, I feel really lucky that I was kind of forced into that situation in my business because I was going to have a baby. But it's, it really has meant that I have always gone, where are my gaps? Both in a, um, both in a capability, for us both from a capability perspective and a time perspective. So it's not just, um, as a business owner, lot, often we are multi-skilled. So it's it's not just, are you not capable? It's also, do you have the time or do you want to spend the time doing that? Or could you spend that elsewhere if you outsource this piece? So I think gather the right people around you so that um, your business can enable your life. And I have this lovely line that I've always said, I work to live, not live to work. And I think that's really um, helped my enjoyment of life while running a business. And I think, that, again, that's really, really true. I mean, even if you, your business is kind of growing so significantly, you should always be looking and going, where do I add the most value and what do I love doing? Because if you're not loving what you're doing, you're going to find it really hard to go to work every day anyway. It will definitely suck life out of you. But also there's certain things that you will add more value to. So, I mean, I can do all kinds of stuff. You can do all kinds of stuff. All of us as business owners have had to do everything in the beginning. But at the end of the day, we shouldn't be doing some of that stuff. So, yeah, I think you've done a great job of building people around you can actually do that. And then that enables the a better life. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to get onto the show because I think I think that it's very, you know, the way that you've chosen to run the business and the way that you're choosing to bring this program to New Zealand is really about making sure that people do lead the best possible holistic life because it like, business is not everything. I love business. I could probably spend 24 seven hours working if I wanted to, but there is other things I also love. And I think sometimes we can lose sight of that because the business becomes overwhelming. Yeah. Hey, look, it's been um, wonderful to have you on the show. Lovely to have you come along. If people want to find out a bit more about what you're doing, where could they actually find that information? 
beminded.co.nz. Perfect. We'll make sure that is actually in the um, show notes as well. But um, thanks, Nat. It's been wonderful to meet you. Oh, such a pleasure. Thanks, Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.